Okay, so we're going to uh, continue now with uh, a lesson where we will, um, well, we're going to build toward a, a theorem uh, or really an algorithm due to, to Kruskal and a, a theorem that it works as advertised. Um, but the the main take home point here is uh, is, is is kind of actually something a, a, a little bit subtle that's really more of an ingredient in the proof than it is uh, 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 the, the 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 proof itself. Um, we know what a spanning tree is. Spanning trees have lots of nice features in graphs. Um, there is a nice way of moving from one spanning tree to another in a graph. So if you're moving one, from one spanning tree to another, obviously you're moving, you're, you're, um, you're always going to have the same vertex set, because I'm talking about spanning trees, but you're, and you're always going to have the same number of edges. Um, so if you want to kind of make a small move, if you have n minus one edges in your spanning tree now, and you want to move to a different one, well, you have to get rid of one edge and add one edge. That's the, the smallest move you could do. And uh, uh, that kind of swap is a very useful thing, and there's a, there's a lot of power in that um, in that operation. And uh, so the first thing we're going to do is kind of uh, establish some properties of that operation, that kind of a swap when you can take an edge that's not a, in a tree and an edge that's in a tree and swap one for the other and get a new spanning tree of the graph. Uh, and then once we're equipped with that, we'll do uh, we'll do Kruskal's algorithm, and we'll see how Kruskal's algorithm kind of leans on that um, on that uh, on, on these essential properties. So let's start with um, a couple of definitions. So I'm going to assume that T is a spanning tree of G, uh, and I'm going to let F be an edge that's not in the tree. Now, uh, we're going to define a cycle of the graph with the property that all of the edges except f of this cycle are contained in my spanning tree t. Such a cycle is going to be called a fundamental cycle. Um, let me say, so if c is a cycle of g, such that C delete F is a subgraph of T, we call C a fundamental cycle of F with respect to the tree T. Right? So uh, let me just do a little little picture. <clears throat> There's my spanning tree T. Maybe in the bigger graph I have lots of other edges. If this is my edge F, then you can see there's a cycle of my graph that's going to contain this uh, path from the tree T plus that edge F. And our, in fact, our easy proposition here, this is really an observation, is that every edge F that's not in the tree is going to be contained in a unique um, is going to be contained in a unique fundamental cycle. So for every uh, uh, for every edge f that's not an edge of our tree, there is a unique fundamental cycle of f with respect to and this is an easy argument. Of course, whatever ed edge F is, say its ends are U and V, I know that there's always a unique path between any two vertices U and V in a tree. That path plus the edge F is going to be a cycle, and that's, that's if and only if, right? Uh, a fundamental cycle is going to have to consist of F plus a path in the tree between those two ends of F. Again, because that path is necessarily unique, we always have exactly one fundamental cycle. So um, 
If I give you a tree T and some edge outside of the tree, there's going to be a unique cycle of the graph that contains that edge F and the rest is with the rest of it contained in the tree T. Uh, so we're seeing that in this little example here and that, uh, that holds more generally. Now, uh, our next theorem, I guess I called it a proposition. I'm a little funny in these notes. I use a proposition or theorem or lemma. I mean, these things are all logically equivalent, but uh, have a slightly different connotation. Um, so let's let T be a spanning tree. Of G, I'm going to let F be an edge that's not in the tree and E be an edge that's in the tree. And uh, what I'm going to be interested in doing, as I said, is, is doing that little swap. I want to take, so F is an edge that's not in the tree, E is an edge that's in the tree. I'd like to take E out and put F in and know when do I have a spanning tree again. When, how can, when can I move from one spanning tree another, to another by that operation? And they're basically, uh, they're, they're sort of just two ways of kind of seeing this. One is sort of relative to E and one is relative to F. So I'm going to give you two conditions. So if, uh, if E is in the fundamental cycle of F, then that swap gives you a new spanning tree. So if E in the fundamental cycle of F with respect to T, then my tree T, delete E plus F, is a spanning tree. Um, so this that, that that that's sort of relative to the edge F, right? So if I'm asking, so relative, relative to the edge F, if you want to put F in and take somebody out, who can you take out? Well, you put in F, you're going to form a fundamental cycle. If you take out any edge from that fundamental cycle, you've got yourself a new tree. Good go. Um, now let's think about things relative to the edge E. Suppose I want to delete the edge E. What edges could I put in? How, how do I know when I can put an edge back in? Well, when you delete the edge E from your tree T, you're going to be left with a graph with two components. And what's fairly easy to see is if you take any edge F that has its ends, it, the two ends, one in each component of T delete E, then adding that edge back is going to return you to a spanning tree. So if F has one end in each component of T delete E, um, then T delete F is a spanning tree. Sorry, this is a, my writing is not the best there, but of course, it's, as always, this is found in the notes. So again, I'm, uh, I wanna play some games. I wanna move from one spanning tree to another. So I want to know how I can do that, and what we're uh, so what we're interested in doing is doing this this sort of the, the cheapest swap, the smallest, the most subtle move we can do. Take our spanning tree, take one edge out, and put one other edge in. We can think about doing that swap. I want to know when I'm going to get another tree, and what can we do? Well, we can uh, we can sort of think about this relative to an edge we'd like to add in or an edge we'd like to take out. If you want to add some edge in, add some edge F in, well, F is going to form a cycle, the fundamental cycle with F of F with respect to your tree T. That's a cycle. If you delete any other edge of that cycle, I claim that you're back to a spanning tree. Conversely, if you want to remove some edge E from your tree, well, you've got some tree, it's got this edge E. When you delete it, you're then going to have a graph with two components, right? E is a cut edge of the cycle of the, of the tree. Um, so you're going to have a graph with two components. If you take any edge F with one end in each of those two components, then when you add F back, you're again going to have a spanning tree. So that's the, that's the content of this theorem. The, the proof here is very easy. I obviously didn't leave myself a whole lot of space for it, but it, it doesn't take so much, um, so much to do. As usual, the, the, um, the writing in the notes is, is, is a little bit better than what I'll, or a little bit more complete than what I'll say here. Um, but uh, <clears throat> let's, so for one, let's think about the graph T plus F. 
<clears throat> so for one, let's think about the graph t plus f. Now, uh, t plus f is going to have the feature that the edge e is contained in a cycle of that graph, right? So t plus f, this is a connected, and e is in, e is not a cut edge. of t plus f, right? E is contained in some cycle in that graph. That means that if you take t plus f, delete e, you have a connected graph. This is going to be a connected graph, but uh, now I'm going to lean on that nice property we saw before. I have a connected graph with the right number of edges to be a spanning tree, and therefore it is a spanning tree, right? If you have a if you have a graph with the right number of edges to be a spanning tree, and I tell you it is uh, it is connected, then it's necessarily going to be a uh, a spanning tree. So uh, I don't think I have enough room to write that. This is written in the notes. T plus F minus E. This is a connected graph. You know, it's a, a graph on n vertices with n minus one edges. It is connected, therefore it is a uh, a tree. So therefore it's a spanning tree of my original graph. Uh, uh, so there's a little bit, uh, this is a, is a spanning tree. Okay, for property two, now we're going to look at the graph t delete e. So t minus e has two components. In fact, maybe I'll just draw a picture here. There, there, this, is, this is a pretty easy sort of feature. Here's the graph t delete e. It has two components. If you add the edge f back and f has... Uh, <clears throat> f has one, so what I'm drawing here is, this is t minus e. If f has one end in each component of, of t delete e, then uh, well the graph f is not going to be contained in any cycle in the graph t minus e plus f. So what I claim is, is, is true here is, uh, by the structure here, is f is not Well, what I want to claim is t minus e plus f it has no cycle, right? So again, t minus e has two components. It is, it's certainly a forest, so there's no cycle contained in t delete e. When you add the edge f back, well, f has ends in distinct components. So that edge f is not going to be contained in any cycle in the graph t minus e plus f, because if it was, then its two ends would have to have been in the same component um, <clears throat> after, when, I, when I delete it, when I delete that edge. Uh, so t minus e plus f has no cycle, and again, this has the right count edges versus vertices to be a tree, so therefore it, it must be a tree. So uh, t plus f minus e is a spanning tree. And, and that completes the proof. So what we've got here is a kind of quick and easy way of moving from one spanning tree to another tree to another spanning tree and the idea is at each step we're either going to be um, adding an edge I mean we're at each step we're adding an edge in and moving an edge out but we can think about for a given edge that we want to move in who can we push out or for an edge that we want to get rid of who can we bring in and in to replace that and that's what we see here okay um Good. Let's uh, let's go to crossbow. So uh, I, you can see I've uh, uh, sort of preloaded this slide with uh, a definition and an algorithm. Uh, I want I, I'll step through and say the words here, and then I want to um, to show you the algorithm in action, and um, and then we'll prove that it works as advertised. So uh, first off, I need a new definition, a weighted graph. So a weighted graph is just a graph G equipped with a weight function that assigns each edge some real number weight. Um, now, what we're going to be interested in doing uh, a, for Kruskal is we're going to be looking at spanning trees, and we'd like to find a spanning tree with the feature that the sum of the weights on the edges is, uh, is minimum. Right? You can could very easily imagine applications for this and there are there are countless right you have some you know have some collection of of nodes that you want to link together in a network i tell you the cost of placing a link between any two 
Well, if you want to connect all of them up so you can get from any one to any other and, and spend as little as, as, as possible, do it with as, uh, as little cost as possible, then that's a minimum cost spanning tree. Um, this, it, it, this, I'm not gonna go into applications. I mean, there, there, there are plenty. Those uh, can be found in other math courses as well. Um, but, uh, but I do want to add this definition. So a min cost tree, I, this should sort of, this is a minimum weight spanning tree of the grass. I, I, I've just taken to calling it min cost tree. Well, in, in, in part, cause it's a little bit, um, a, a little bit shorter than saying minimum weight spanning tree. Uh, and this is also one of the many common terms for this. So min cost tree for our purposes is always going to be a spanning tree. So I'm going to give you a, a, a graph that is connected and it's going to have weights on the edges. And for us, a min cost tree is going to be a spanning tree of that graph that has uh, uh, the minimum uh, sum of the weights of the edges. Right. So we think of the cost of the spanning tree or the weight of the spanning tree as being the sum of the weights on the edges. And that's what I want to minimize. Um, right. Oh, yeah, this should be. Uh, yeah, I somehow didn't have my blackboard bold, but that, that's real numbers. <clears throat> right, so each edge is going to get a real number weight. Usually these, uh, these weights are, are non-negative, but uh, for Kruskal it doesn't really matter. So, um, uh, so we'll just take our arbitrary uh, real weights. Okay, so uh, it's a perfectly sensible problem. I'm giving you a weighted graph. I'd like you to show me a spanning tree that has the feature that the sum of the weights on its edges is minimum. And that's what we've termed a min cost tree. How are you going to do it? Well, Kruskal suggests a, uh, a greedy algorithm. And it's very straightforward. It's the following. So the input here is going to be a, a weighted graph. And uh, the claim here, and what we're going to eventually prove, is that, is that um, the following procedure is going to output a min cost tree, so a spanning tree of minimum uh, total weight. And what are we going to do? That's very, very simple. So we're just going to choose edges one at a time in, in the most greedy fashion we can. And what is that? Well, we're, I'm just going to choose the edge of minimum weight subject to the constraint that I, I don't want to form cycles, right? I'm, I'm trying to slowly build up to a spanning tree, but if I form a cycle, I've gone wrong. So we're going to be picking up edges one at a time. And the rule is at each step, we just take the lightest, the minimum weight edge we can find subject to the constraint that does not form a so that we don't pick up the edges of edge set of a cycle subject to that constraint so we don't want to ever have a cycle so we're going to maintain at each step that we have a a forest and we'll just slowly um we'll slowly grow our our, our forest un, until we get to a spanning tree um right and so when when you can't add any edge without creating a cycle then we're going to stop and just return that, uh, uh, that, that graph that you've found, uh, uh, namely all the vertices plus the edges that you have selected. So we think of this as a process where just edges are selected one at a time. And uh, so let me do an example here. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to execute Kruskal's algorithm on this little weighted graph. And uh, you'll watch me go. I'm going to I'm going to indicate which edges I select by just uh, kind of bolding that edge with my pen, but I'm also going to write down, uh, I'll just write it down so I keep track of all the edges. So again, at every step, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, like I have a set of edges that I've selected. It starts out empty. <clears throat> uh, at each stage, I'm going to choose the minimum weight edge that's not already selected subject to the constraint that it does not form a cycle with any of the selected edges, right? So first up, I can pick up the edge one. Oh yeah, as usual, I'm, I'm, I mean, there are multiple things. Of course, we have some edge set and then a function that assigns each edge a weight, but I've, I've just given every edge in this uh, graph a distinct weight, and that's convenient because then I can just talk about the edge using the, the, the weights themselves. Um, so I'm, I'm going to uh, just describe the edges in terms of their edge weight. So edge one is just the edge of weight one. 
Uh, so first up, I'll pick up edge one. That gives me this edge. The next uh, lowest weight edge is two. I can pick up that one. So next up, I'll pick up a two. You can see that edge three, I'm not gonna pick up. I'm not gonna use that edge because three would form a cycle with one and two. And we have already got a one and a two. Those are selected. There's no deselecting here. We're just going greedily. We're just picking up one edge after another. So three, we're just not gonna use. And you can see that we're never gonna use it again. I mean, if you wanted to sort of cross it off or something, you can. We'll, I'll, I'll just choose to ignore it right now. But we'll pick up one and two. Three, we will not take. How about four? No problem, four does not form a cycle. Five, we can pick up the edge of weight five. The edge of weight six, there it is. Seven, oh, seven we cannot pick up because seven would form a cycle with four and five. How about eight? There we are. How about edge nine? There we are. 10 would form a cycle. 11, oh, 11 we've got, okay. And now you can see, well, 12 would form a cycle, 13, 14. Well, now I've got a spanning tree, right? Is there no edge of weight 15? Oh, I guess not. Uh, anyway, so any edge I would pick up now would form a cycle. And so we're gonna stop and output this, uh, this spanning tree. And the, the claim here is that in this specific example and more generally in an arbitrary graph, this process, uh, Kruskal's algorithm, is always going to output a min cost tree, which again is a spanning tree with minimum total weight. So, um, um, oh, I realized that I should have said, Um, I want my graph G to be connected. If the graph G is not connected, when this process stops, you won't have a spanning tree because the graph G doesn't have a spanning tree. Um, it's, uh, it is fairly easy to see, and maybe I'll start off by just, just proving it, that, um, that this, this tree that we return will in fact be a, um, a spanning tree. Right, because what what is it? Well, I, I I we're maintaining it all along the way that you have a forest. So at every step of the game, you have a forest. Right, at each stage, you you have a forest, and you're adding an edge that does not form a cycle. So you're always going to have a forest, um, but you only stop. The stopping condition is that any edge you go to add would form a cycle. And we know that if you have chosen a subgraph which is maximal, subject to being a forest. In a connected graph, then that subject, then that subgraph is necessarily a spanning tree, right? If I give you a connected graph, a maximal subgraph that has no cycle is a spanning tree. So, um, so we know that we're going to get a spanning tree. What what we have to argue is that the, we actually get the minimum cost spanning tree. And the way we're going to argue this is looking into some of these little uh, edge exchanges. We're, uh, we're going to take advantage of the fact that, well, if you see a spanning tree, there are other spanning trees that are kind of nearby. And we're going to be able to mine that for some information to, to argue that this, this greedy process has worked as advertised. OK, so um, right. So that's Kruskal's algorithm. Let's, uh, let's do the proof. So, well, maybe I'll say the theorem here. So the theorem is that Kruskal's algorithm works. So uh, Kruskal algorithm returns a min cost tree. <clears throat> so let's prove this. So let's... Um, uh, so, you know, we can, all we're going to do, we're going to run the algorithm. It produces some tree T. Let's, let's take it. So let's let E1 on up to EM be the edge set, the, the edges, the edges selected by Kruskal. And let's let T be that tree that we get. So there's the tree T. Um, now, 
I want to argue that T is the very best tree. How am I going to do that? It's, it's not so obvious, uh, but uh, here's a thing that we can do. So if, if um, oh my gosh, uh, I'm sorry. I am only, I forgot to say something important. <clears throat> Um, I am going to add an additional assumption. This theorem I've stated here is true, but it's a little bit more subtle than, uh, than where I want to go right now. Um, I am going to add an extra assumption here that's a fairly light assumption, but it does simplify the proof uh, uh, like notably. Now it's, it's this, the proof the more general proof is, of the same uh, of the same type, but it is really another layer more subtle than this. Uh, so my my extra assumption, which again you you don't need for the the theorem is still true without this, but the proof is much trickier, and I, I just want to do an easy version of this. So I'm um, I'm gonna o omit the subtleties. So I'm uh, I'm gonna assume that the weight function is uh, is one to one, that distinct edges have distinct weights. So I'm assuming that uh, the weight of E and the weight of F are always different whenever E and F are diff different edges. So you never give two edges, two different edges, the same weight. Um, again, this is Kruskal's theorem, uh, sorry, Kruskal's algorithm is guaranteed to work without that assumption, but the proof is just harder. And so I'm just going to take this as a simplifying assumption because it cleans things up. So, uh, and, and it's all of the same. It's uh, essence of what's going on it can be seen here you see the power of these interchanges you see the logic and how we go after it um, so the, the the main kind of um, take home teaching points are already here uh, okay so e1 up to em those are the edges selected by the Kruskal's algorithm uh, t is the spanning tree there uh, now how am I going to argue that t is uh, T is actually the best. Well, I am going to go by contradiction. I'm going to assume that there's a better tree. And uh, you, I think if you think about this for a moment, it'll feel good to assume there's a better tree because it gives you something to play against, right? So I'm actually going to take the best tree. So I'm going to um, suppose for a contradiction that there is some some other tree out there, T star, whose weight is less than or equal to the weight of T. So I'm, um, I'm going to argue that, in fact, not only is our, our tree T the best, but in fact, you can't even find anybody that ties it. So I'm going to suppose for a contradiction that there's some other tree T star is a min cost tree. Um, is a min cost tree and T star is not equal to T. Okay, so I'm gonna suppose for a contradiction there's some other tree out there, T star. So what do I know uh, at, at this point? Um, well, again, I'm going for a contradiction. So I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I've assumed a couple things and I'm gonna go for a contradiction. Um, if I, my, my only assumption here that I'm gonna contradict is that there's some min cost tree T star that's not equal to T. Right, so T star, it's just given to us. We really don't know how T star was constructed. It's just handed to us. But what we know about it, it is that it is a min cost tree. So it is a spanning tree with minimum total weight in the whole graph. What do we know about the tree T? We know about the tree T that the edges were selected by way of Kruskal's algorithm. So we know how the edges were chosen to make our tree T, and we know um, and we know what the tree T star is. T star is a min, uh, uh, is, is a, a min cost tree. So it's a spanning tree with minimum total weight. Um, now, uh, I know that the tree T prompt, sorry, T star and T, they're not equal. So I can choose some edge that's in T star and not in T. And let's do, let's choose an edge F in, that's an edge of T star 
but not, oh, oops, sorry, I made, uh, let me just try this on a, another line. I'm going to choose an edge F that's an edge of T star, but not an edge of T. So there it is. So I've got some edge F that's an edge of T star, but not an edge of T. Now what I want to do is I want to, I want to plug that edge F into my tree T and, and look at the fundamental cycle. So let's, uh, let's draw a picture. So here's going to be my tree T. Here's, maybe here's the edge F. Right, F is not in the tree T, so that means there's a unique fundamental cycle of F with respect to my tree T. Now, um, <clears throat> now what I want to do is I want to look at these edges of my, of, 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 of my tree T that are in this fundamental cycle. Let's say is maybe this is edge EI. Right? So EI is just some edge that's in the fundamental cycle. In, well, sorry, let me give it a name. Let's let EI be in the fundamental cycle of F with respect to my tree T. So there it is. There's my edge EI. Now, uh, <clears throat> if I take my original tree so if I take take the tree T and uh, add the edge F and delete the edge EI, I again have a spanning tree T. Or sorry, I have a new spanning tree. Right? So let's let me just note that. Note if I take the tree T and I delete EI, um, this is a spanning tree. Now, what, it, what does that mean? So <clears throat> let's think, so, so in other words, if I have, um, um, well, okay, so T delete EI plus F is a spanning tree. So now that means that if you take all of the edges selected prior to EI, so if you take E1, E2, on up to EI minus one, so, the set of edges E1, E2, on up to EI minus 1, together with the edge F, this is not going to contain the, this is not going to contain the edge set of a cycle, because, because this is contained in T minus EI plus F. Right? Again, uh, if you take all the edges that we selected prior to EI, E1, E2, on up to EI minus 1, and then add the edge F to it, that will not contain a cycle because that's just, that's just a subset of the edges of, our, of the spanning tree, T delete EI plus F. So this doesn't contain the edge set of a cycle. What that means is that let's go back in time to that point in time where we were going to choose the edge EI. We were about to choose you know, at that stage, we had chosen edges E1, E2, on up to EI minus 1. And we were looking around. And how did we choose the edge EI? Well, we chose an edge that was minimum weight, subject to the constraint that it didn't form a cycle with what we have so far. And what we're seeing here is that instead of choosing the edge EI, we could have chosen the edge F. F was a perfectly valid edge to choose instead of EI. So if we chose edge EI instead of edge F, the weight of EI must be less than or equal to the weight of F. And in fact, because we're assuming weights are distinct, the weight of EI is less than the weight of F. So here's where we're taking advantage of the actual nature of the algorithm, how the algorithm works. The algorithm is choosing that minimum weight edge that doesn't form a cycle with what we've seen so far. Thus, the you, maybe I'll say by the, the, the algorithm, the weight of EI must be less than the weight of F. Okay, so the weight of that edge EI is less than the weight of F. And uh, 
that seems like a very good start, but also, well, so, I mean, it's, sounds, uh, it's starting to sound like that other tree, T star, isn't, how can it be the best tree if it's got this lousy edge F? And indeed, that's what we're going to take advantage of now. And that's what we're going to get, draw our, our, our final contradiction from. So let's look at this path, P, <clears throat> obtained from the fundamental cycle of F with respect to T mi minus, minus that edge F. So now, uh, okay, so let's, okay, well, let me just name a couple things. Let's let C be the fundamental cycle of F with respect to T and let's and define the path P to be C delete F, right? So uh, so now in, in my picture here, this this red path, that's my P. So P is P is a whole path. It's got, it's got some vertices and some edges here. That's my path P. Now um, now we're going to flip perspective and we're going to go take a look at the tree T star, but we're going to delete the um, delete the edge F from. So now I'm just going to draw a whole new picture. This is T star minus F. So T star minus F, well, it's now got two components. I'll show you where F used to be. So F, that was the edge F. We deleted the edge F. So again, T star, the thing that we know about T star is that this is a min cost tree. So this is a spanning tree with minimum possible total weight in, in the graph G. And there's, and now we've chucked this edge F. Now what I want to do is I want to look at this path P. That path P it is a path that goes from one endpoint of F to the other endpoint of F. So let's let's draw P now down here in the picture. So P, maybe it starts here at this endpoint of F, maybe it stays in this component of T star delete F for a little bit, but at some point it's gonna have to leave and go to the other component. So that means P is going to contain an edge that has ends in distinct components of T star delete F. But whatever edge this is, I know that it has weight less than the weight of F, right? The, that whole path P, all of the edges on that path have weight less than that of F. I've just removed the edge F. I can see that I can add back in place of F, I can add back some other edge from that path. That edge is gonna have smaller weight and that's going to give me a new spanning tree that has lower weight than T star. And that's my final contradiction. So I've run out of space to, to write very much, uh, but I will just get, hit the key points here as best I can. Now, um, P contains an edge E. So maybe this is my edge E here. P is going to contain some edge E with ends in uh, distinct components of T star uh, oops, of T star minus F. And now, if you take the tree T star and delete F and add E, this is going to be a new spanning tree with smaller total weight than T star, and that's a contradiction. So I'll just say now uh, T star minus F plus E uh, gives a contradiction. And the contradiction here is that T star minus F plus E, again, it is going to be a new spanning tree. We know that from our edge exchange properties, and we can see that it's going to have smaller weight than T star, and that's a contradiction because by assumption, T star was supposed to be the tree of minimum, uh, uh, the, the spanning tree of minimum total weight. And that contradiction completes the proof, and, uh, and, that, and that's Kruskal's algorithm.